It is September the 11th, 2021, and you are listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Hello, welcome back. I'm Chris. There's Imar, there's Adrian, there's Jeremiah. Everyone Hello, back everybody. together. Hey, everybody. Yeah, make some noise. Make some noise. Woo-hoo, woo-hoo. Yeah. Definitely. I, I just, uh, you know, I think uh, just taking a brief moment to recognize that uh, 20 years ago at this oh, yeah. moment. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Jeremy, we, yeah. You know, I, I personally was in New York and watched the towers came down and, and feel uh, obligated to kind of just say that uh, because this is the kind of, uh, of moment that remains certainly with me. Oh. Um not just with scarred you. forever. I think there isn't a person in the world who was alive at the time who doesn't remember where they were. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. At I was the I was in Dublin of all places, and wow. uh, I remember sending messages to my colleagues in the United States. Look, wow. turn on yeah. your TV. I was across the bridge, the Manhattan Bridge, from the towers, hmm. walking against traffic that had jammed up the towers were on fire and as we were trying to fight through uh, the towers one of them the first one started to come down and this is with no media no you know no no contextualization Mm. it was uh, as if it happened yesterday to me it's just seared in my head and Mm. then the second one Mm. so you know it's Today and the person I'm with, we will have dinner t- together tonight uh, as, as kind of a, we, we spend uh, this day often together in, you know, remembrance. And it, it, it's apt that, that we will be talking about propaganda today because mm-hmm. so much of what happened after that has been used, abused and misused uh, to further uh, agendas um, of which I do not agree with. So there you go. That's my rant. <laughs> okay. Um, so, propaganda. The future of, of propaganda. We, um, yeah, it's it's an interesting topic because, you know, I don't know, Imar, you brought this together. So, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just uh, going to let you I don't know if, if it's this. been from just the last few conversations that we've all had or just from the wider world in general. But it's really been on my mind lately. And, and, and a fair um, warning to everyone who's listening or watching. There might be some dystopia in this episode today. You know, but you know what? You can't ignore it either. So, you know. No, of course not. This is it like. So these are how things change, I suppose. But um, we're just surrounded, aren't we? Constantly surrounded. And, uh, you know, we've I mean, propaganda has always been there, I suppose, even before the camera. But since the camera, I think um, the the. the camera has definitely made it easier for us to be influenced um, for the good as well as for the bad. So, <laughs> um, like, I, I'm thinking of things like leaving aside the kind of obvious stuff that we could talk about with, you know, propaganda from the war times, political propaganda, which is, um, I mean, I'm, I'm here with three men. Maybe we could, and I'm not to generalize, but maybe you could, we could probably spend the entire episode just talking about stuff like that but um i'm i'm thinking of things like it more in the wider world like as a woman i think like the beauty industry the propaganda that um is just 24 7 constantly sure. surrounded so us. so so uh how do we define propaganda i think that's that's a good starting point are we are we including advertising in that or is I it think we definitely are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and since advertising became a thing, my pick of the week is an Adam Curtis documentary and uh, I, I don't know if any, any of the rest of your fans I just absolutely love everything he does. Um and yeah, it's it's like they're mind blowingly they, they piece so much of the puzzles together for me. Um and that one did particularly and uh, the century of the self I was watching again lately and just sort of fed into this whole dystopian <laughs> thing that we've got going on at the moment. But I mean, we, we're, ca- we're, we're sheep and that's what they want us to be. So, you know, it, it's everywhere and it's so subtle at times. It's not even it's not even blatant. It's subtle and it's so subtle that things that are 
um, our propaganda, but, you know, gentle propaganda, if, if, it, if there is such a thing, um, that sort of get under your skin and into your subconscious and you don't even realise that you're you're playing the game sometimes until, you know, you realise, or maybe you never realise, some people never realise that they're caught in this trap. You know? Can I posit something, Imar, yeah. that, that, that perhaps uh, the notion of propaganda, which we still really haven't uh, defined as, as being a a kind of language, whether it be visual or, mm. or written or cultural, uh, that is uh, designed to, um, to affect a certain to behavior yeah. and action. And uh, it, it is not the whole, uh, re- I'm going to say, organized religion from the very beginning. I mean, we can go back for five or 6,000 years uh, uh, you know, Mesopotamia, Egypt, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And when we look at the history written, when we kind of read the tablets um, uh, of the cuneiform, you know, all of these are designed as propaganda to kind of unite a group of people, whether it be a culture or a community or a country, um, around an idea to provoke action or inaction. And, and yeah. I think that the only thing that's really particularly changed is the widespread use and abuse of, of global media that makes it uh, easier for an individual to participate in um, kind of a absorbing or defining or putting out their own versions of propaganda. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So there's more of it everywhere all the time. But I suppose discernment, I suppose, becomes the thing then when we are surrounded with all this media, doesn't it? Or does it? I I don't know. (laughs) Well, how does Um, it affect the future of photography? (laughs) Well, (laughs) I mean, photography is a big part of it. I mean, mean, since social media became a thing, like um, the, the... propaganda around us has like exponentially increased as well because it's everywhere it's in your hand all the time it's on every device you're watching if you choose to watch tv or um you know in, you engage with that then you're getting it from that side as well you're getting it in the news you're getting it um in the adverts you're getting it in everything and it's coming at you from all angles but um how do we uh, now, the Internet of Things, that's the, the next thing, and artificial intelligence and faking of photographs. And, uh, like, it, it just, it's just going to, I don't know. Like, where does it, can you believe anything you see? The whole fake news phenomenon, that's part of it, isn't it? Well, could you ever believe everything you see? <laughs> no, no. But now just a you... question. <laughs> but now... That's true. I understand exactly where you're coming from. But on the other hand, nowadays, like the actual trusted sources now nowadays that you would have believed in the past um, that people didn't question that, you know, people believe that, you know, their their governments, you know, had their best interests at heart. And, and all of a sudden people don't believe that anymore. So the very kind of bare bones of the things that everybody sort of trusts and believes in are, are just all up in the air now as well. So you just don't, it's, you've no idea what side, what's right and what's wrong even anymore. So, you know, or whose side that you're on. It was easier when there was a kind of a several uh, individual forces, whether they be the king or the, the pope um, or a you know, a priest or rabbi, etc. Uh, uh, but that clearly more. has fed into exactly why we are where we are today. So, like, where do we take it from there? You know, well, now we just have an expansion of all of those. If we don't, you know, if we no longer believe in any ideology, then how can we actually have a purpose? And it seems to me that when nations global nations lose a sense of common purpose, whatever that is, they then lose what it means to be a nation. And then you start to see the crumbling of 
um, of nationalism and uh, is sort of a, a return to uh, populism and very dangerous kinds of things on the other yeah. side. I, I don't really see that uh, humanity has evolved uh, except that things have moved a lot faster and that we have so much more visual information coming at us to interpret, interpolate, and react to. And we have the ability to propagate the same. So where that goes in the future, who mm. knows? I think it's important just, you know, for especially kids and, and younger people coming up along that they do learn to discern and that they're not. I mean, it almost needs to become part of the education system. I mean, I'm very conscious of everything that um, sort of I, I, I'm really impressed by my daughter kind of picks things out quite frequently and points out really cynically to me. Oh, look there. Look, that's so cliche like or, you know, the way that they're trying to advertise something to um, like a, a shampoo. And then, you know, she'll say, well, why are they playing this dramatic music? And, you know. Uh, but what, that's, you know, that's a good think sign, we're idiots? I think. That's, that's, so it is a good sign. That's a good yeah, sign yeah. because I believe, uh, well, uh, making media, producing media, and everyone who does that has has the tools at hand to, to realize, to recognize um, if someone is trying to make something, well, feel in a certain way, to nudge you towards a certain direction. And that, that media literacy is something mm -hmm. that I've, I'm totally with you that I believe needs to be taught in schools and uh, and, and one the way psychology to, of it all but you know, but it's... but being but being the producer mm. having projects where you produce things where you end up mm. with a video with a thing but when you learn yeah. to tell a story to tell a specific mm -hmm. story and a specific side of a story um, having done these kind of things myself has taught me so much about um, how this works how it how you can use these media to sneak into someone else's mind. And uh, and uh, it has given me, it's almost a bit like an immune system, you know? It has given me uh, uh, the tools not just to create things and create propaganda or uh, whatever yeah. we want to call it, but also but to, to recognize, to recognize it, to yeah. see it and to yeah. uh, to compartmentalize it in in the way that... Um, feels feels right for me. It is the, the education piece is is super important. I mean, I have this with, with my own kids who are who are learning to recognise, you know, uh, uh, that these things, um, uh, and you know, sometimes they support them, sometimes they don't, um, uh, and so some of it is. It, you know, some of the the more blatant stuff yeah, is 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 easy to spot, but then some of it is is just perhaps at the more subtle end, just the the sometimes unwitting reinforcement of cultural stereotypes is 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 really tricky as as well. So uh, I'm watching uh, my wife and I are watching at the moment a series on Netflix. Uh, and and it's one that uh, started out about ten years ago and ran for about eight nine years, and we're just watching it through. Um, no need to mention the name, but it's set in a corporate environment, and and all the women are wearing tight fitting clothes and stiletto heels, and and there are examples of of sort of shots, sort of a scene we're opening a shot where where actually the the camera will start off. Uh, sort of pointing towards the ground and, and a woman will walk into the scene and the first thing you'll see is the woman's legs as she's walking along and then it tracks up to her face and 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 then she's part of the scene and part of the conversation but it just seems even things like that sort of you know from seven eight years ago so dated and you'd never mm. and it feels we actually said to each other you'd never get away with making that now you know and so yeah and and it is su such a reinforcement of of uh, a stereotype it 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 feels it's almost hard to watch um and you know another thing you know possibly slightly similar in concept um is is the the awareness now of orientalism in photography um and uh it's um you know something that i've read several times over the last few years um of, often one of the quoted photographers is steve mccurry um he, he of the afghan girl uh, and and other photographs um another one that i've seen in this sort of context these sorts of articles is um there's quite a famous photo of his of, of two 
uh, two men on the front of a steam train, a steam locomotive as it goes past the Taj Mahal. Uh, and, you know, it, it, the, the accusation is that it, it, it casts a, a, a picture of India as being something, yeah, it romanticizes it, but it also casts it as something as being, you know, a, a, a less developed place. Um, uh, and the reality of India, of course, is not like that at all for the vast majority of it. Uh, and so it's, it, you know, the, the, these things, I think, you know, I mean, we can, uh, it'd be great. I mean, re in, in doing a little bit of reading around for this conversation, you know, you come mm -hmm. across these brutalist Soviet you know, posters and stuff yeah, like that, yeah, which, yeah, yeah. which which are uh, uh, amazing in their own right, right, um, uh, in, in terms of artistic yeah, in mm -hmm. terms of imagery, sorry, no, maybe yeah, not artistic, yeah. but in terms of, in terms of imagery, they are they are a thing in their own right. And if you say yo Soviet era posters, pretty much everybody who's listening to this podcast is going to yeah. have a picture in their mind about what that actually looks like. Mm. So incredibly effective image image making, uh, and um, yeah, it's sort of a kind that you 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 don't often often see in in graphic design. Um, you know, uh, it's, but it's, it, it, I think the, the education piece to go back to the education piece, I think it, it is so popular, uh, important, sorry, to be able to recognize mm. these things. Uh, I think the latest, um, thing is probably greenwashing, um, at the thing that we were all hearing about now, because companies are really beginning to be called out on, on stuff that they're putting out there. That's blatant lies really, but you know, you can be lulled into, you know, just by one word, the word natural or the word organic or the word. And then when you read the fine print, you discover that this is not the case at all. This isn't what it's saying. And um, I found a good article there that pulls up a few of the most recent um, examples of that. Um, the Ikea one is, is a good. Uh, the Coca-Cola one, that photograph there, you know, I mean, you could totally be sucked in, by, <laughs> couldn't you? So for people who are just listening to this, this is a Coca-Cola focus. bottle with a green label mm -hmm. rather than sitting in the grass a red label, with the label. Green sitting label. in the grass oh. and it says Coca-Cola life. Coca-Cola life. Sweetness from natural sources. But it turns out that it was only there. It says 6.6 percent sugar. So it, it, it just it, it wasn't even that different from the original Coke. Um, but people bought into it just because and then other people discovered you know, it, it's good that there's more there's more people coming out and saying, "Come on, this is ridiculous." Um, the IKEA, <clears throat> the IKEA one's very interesting. Um, they've been using like that stuff about the the Forest Stewardship Council. That FSC mark is so ubiquitous everywhere, and when you see it, you think immediately, "Oh, this is you know, this is quality. This is you know, produced in the proper manner." But apparently, that isn't the case at all. Um, stuff like that. <clears throat> so maybe we are becoming a little bit more intelligent about recognizing um, lies <laughs> and um, propaganda and advertisers trying to influence us when we see it. Yeah, I think I think it is. Yes, uh, we you've got to keep up. It's always a race to keep up, isn't it? I think most people now seeing uh, a nineteen fifties cigarette advertisement that says, "Yeah, this is yeah, <laughs> cal calms you down. It's good for you." Is it, most people mm -hmm. are probably going to see straight through that. But yeah, and your doctors uh, recommend Camel. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, those are amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that, yes. that was but that was a concerted effort. That was a concerted propaganda effort by uh, the tobacco industry. Um, Absolutely, which which, which by now is, is has become obvious and uh, well known. You know, in that um, century itself, there's actually uh, it goes through um, when they were trying to uh, promote the tobacco to women. They discovered that women weren't smoking cigarettes at all; that it was mostly <laughs> men. And they thought this That's is not right. Yeah. We want everybody smoking. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they they made like they got all these um, women to. Uh, literally come out uh, at a parade waving their cigarettes around and uh, you know that was a great photographic opportunity and was shown all over the place and lo and behold loads of women took up smoking so it, it, you know it's nuts like 
the stuff that we'll do if if um, <laughs> if we think everyone else is doing it too. Oh, it's that, just that, that is one of the best ways to to get people to do something <laughs> by showing that their peers or friends are doing yeah, 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 the yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, it's just not. Um, <laughs> It is, yeah. Uh, but and, it, it uh, uses pictures, and pictures are, are a very visceral thing. I mean, we, when we look at our brain, um, I don't even know how much, but I think it's 60 or 70 percent of our brain is is involved in processing visual information. So it's the most important thing that we do with our brain mm. is to process visual things, and, uh, and uh, that gives the visual side a lot of weight and a lot of importance can we talk about instagram then yeah <laughs> a platform i'm not fond of yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> uh but uh yeah it, i i just just thinking about yeah the, the there's a lot of stories uh you know uh, that come from instagram or for, from either from misuse of instagram uh, or social media in general i suppose i should say but especially instagram as it is a an image first platform mm -hmm. and there are so many influencers now mm. uh, on instagram who are um you know uh, i guess in quotes showing their best lives um, and and it's driving a lot of uh, a lot of challenges for people who take it too literally and too really and, and assume that it's real when of yeah. course mm -hmm. actually it's not and, and I'm not suggesting that uh, just for, for balance here I will say up front I, I'm not suggesting that all influencers are trying to do bad things because clearly that that's that's not true uh, at one level they are just people trying to make a living and if you talk uh, if you if you you know see art, read articles or see youtube videos about what, what actually the life of an influencer is really like um mm. uh then actually some of them work incredibly hard um and so or many of them i suspect um so i, I know they're not intending to be part of the problem necessarily um, so I'll say that up front for balance, but I think there is, there is a problem here, isn't there, where, where imagery that you see on social media, whether it be local or global or whatever, um, is, mm. is, it can be incredibly damaging, to, especially to vulnerable people or maybe younger people who are more uh, influenceable. Yeah, or at, insecure. Yeah. At least Instagram yeah. isn't isn't uh, too cagey about it anymore. They officially their their head of uh, well the head of Instagram has recently officially uh, said that Instagram is no longer a photo sharing app. He um, here's here's a here's a tweet that he sent. At Instagram, we're always trying to build new features that help you get the most out of your experience. Right now, we're focused on four key key areas: creators, video, shopping, and messaging. The whole photo part of Instagram is, isn't important anymore. It's about branding. It's about selling. It's about shopping. Um, and yeah, they are, they're not even hiding it anymore. So Apparently not. Yeah. Actually, I found um, an interesting uh, study that they did in, I think, Birmingham, University of Birmingham. And it was, um, they took a, a lot of women and they asked them to take a selfie. And half of the women were allowed to use filters on the photographs and do whatever they wanted. And the other half just had to do it as was and be happy <laughs> with whatever came out. So... Um, as as it turns out, they discovered in in this from the study that um, even even the ones that had used all the filters in the world and were able to control it, retake the photo, pick their favorite one, were equally as insecure about the picture that was posted as as the women who did nothing to it. So you'd, you'd instantly jump on. I would have instantly jumped on Instagram as a oh, it's terrible, you know, those stupid filters and totally unreal. And, you know, apparently it doesn't matter. People are kind of insecure anyway in, in that way. A lot of people. So um, who cares? You know, well, I think, you know, if to... you're if you're a 12 year old or a 14 year old or a 16 yeah. year old, you have a certain um, a, 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 you know, difference in how you see yourself in the world, what's being projected on you, what yeah. your social circumstances are, and and the insecurity of that age as you come into yourself specifically and especially as a woman is very difficult to kind of be yourself and not be, quote, influenced or, or, or even <laughs> bullied to be mm. a certain way. And, yeah, yeah. and I think that... that um, 
the, that culture of kind of cultural bullying, whatever that mm. is. Uh, I mean, now, you know, on, on television, we are seeing, uh, certainly here in America, you know, uh, an enor- enormous amount of mixed race couples uh, just uh, and all manner of body sizes and shapes mm. as being the norm. Uh, in in many cases, you feel a certain cynicism as they present it. But they don't really want to do this, but they feel they have to. In other cases, it's genuine and 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 does serve a demographic that has long been underserved. Um, but you know, these kinds of uh, body images have always been uh, present, certainly in the West. I mean, you know, it used to be even for men that a big stomach corpulent look was a sign of wealth and, you know, good, mm. good living. And now it's mm. sort of a beer drinking debauched person. <laughs> so uh, we read about it quite differently. It used to be, uh, it used to be on the, um, that was me signaling my wife if you're <laughs> just watching that. <laughs> um, uh, I think that things change culturally and our reactions to whatever information propaganda as aggressive as that could be does change, shift, and, um, and, and, and kind of maneuver in ways that are unexpected. Uh, I, I think the question really for people is to understand how to, how to filter. And I think that comes from community and it comes from family. Uh, it should come out of the educational system. I really believe that. Uh, side, I was watching a, uh, a early horror film, supposedly, uh, The Creature from the Black Lagoon with my eight-year-old um, granddaughter who requested that we watch it. <laughs> uh, right. And, and, uh, Good choice. And I start, you know, we were talking about things and, you know, her father's a cameraman. So she was like, that looks fake. Is that a green screen? It was like projection. <laughs> so she, she was savvy to that. And then like on these tent scenes, I demonstrated to her that if we turn off the music, that things were not really that uh, intense. Yeah, and then we put yeah, on the music yeah. and it was like a light bulb went, went off on her. And she was like, oh, yeah, that's that's a guy in a rubber suit, yeah, but with the music, it was something There's one else. of The Shining. Have you seen that one of The Shining where they sure. changed the... Yeah. <laughs> That's but but I, I thought that was really interesting. And at a certain Ooh. point, she turned to me and she said, you know, I, I, the movie is pretty good, but they didn't do a particularly good job, a quote, a particularly good job with the horror. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not scary um, enough. But, uh. but how we are able to interpret what we're seeing really should be part of our, um, our education, whether it's from the family, uh, from the community, or certainly, uh, I think, from our, our institutions, so that people have the tools as they grow up to know or make decisions about whether they feel manipulated or not. So what's the next frontier for propaganda? Where are they going to come at us from next? <laughs> Gaming, probably. Gaming, maybe, oh, yeah. That's an interesting mm. one. Yeah, I mean, you, you have an insight into the world of gaming, Jeremiah, from the way that you use the the games that you use. Um, I, I have an insight in that I'm... I'm trying to to guide my children through growing up in a world where they're very interested in gaming um do do you have a view on on propaganda in gaming at all well i i use gaming in the in the largest sense of the world yeah. uh of the word and world uh it's not just like a shooter a twitch game um but often it's just participating in a environment in which you are motivated to do X, Y, and Z for reasons that are um, your own, whether it's, you know, Robin Hood is a game uh, that's an inv- a horrible investment tool that creates a kind of a gamification of investing generally targeted at, at younger uh, investors and and is, is kind of can take a someone who kind of really jumps in with both feet into really, really negative territory. And there have been examples of suicides and all the rest of it. There's games that real like Roblox or 
any number of those, which really in some ways are very educational in terms of uh, creating a condition where young people can really understand virtual currencies, uh, trading, um, value, uh, building, aesthetics, uh, design. So there, there's a lot of very, very positive things too. But as these things become more and more uh, widespread, I think that the um, ability to influence people in how game design works in order to uh, demonstrate a certain end game. In other words, when you come out of the game, are you going to feel empowered or diminished? Uh, are you need to go back and fill up or, you know, and fill up with what? Is it information? Is it money? Is it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, reaching out culturally? All of those things. Um, so I'm not, I'm not saying one is, is more insidious than another, but I think when you are engaged in gaming, it's a little bit different than watching something passively in terms of, I wonder what Marshall McLuhan would have said about, about gaming in that, you know, radio being a hot medium, television being a cold medium. What's gaming? I mean, is it? <laughs> that's a, that's a really, that's a really interesting thought actually because it's um uh you mentioned Roblox there which is which is a really interesting platform it's it, it's a platform where others can can make games and there are games that do follow certainly gender stereotypes um I'm I'm less well informed on whether they follow cultural stereotypes but I I've I've seen uh, and having two children that are not too far apart in age, of course, they, they, they tend to go through these things, broadly speaking, together. And, uh, you know, it, it, it questions the sort of nature nurture thing about the gender stereotypes, because, they, you know, what, what I see is that, you know, uh, my son and my daughter are attracted to very different things. And some of those times they're very attracted very much towards the gender stereotype. Uh, other times... But other times much less so actually and so and it's really difficult for me to understand whether there's a propaganda element in in that or, or not but but then yeah it's uh the the it, there is definitely uh you know depending upon the the, the types of of game there there are definitely um there, there are definitely stereotypes that are reinforced and thinking that is reinforced whether that is intentional or not or whether it, yeah whether the game designers believe they're caricaturing to make something interesting and fun it's difficult to say you know as someone, who thing worked is in, the, as someone who worked in advertising for a long time both as a photographer and and a commercial director um, you know, I was fully immersed in in the manipulation of of people through imagery, mm -hmm. sound, and cutting um, to provoke a response. Generally, to kind of buy something, or or want something, or need something, or appreciate something. Um, and 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 so, um, you know, I did develop a skill, certainly, to bring it back to what we do, which is. What is yeah, the intention yeah. of the image, right? Like, why are you taking it? Why are you presenting it in that way? Whether it's Instagram, you want to present the fact that your shitty life looks really great to everybody <laughs> and, and they should feel really jealous of you because you feel bad about yourself. And the more you hear how great your life is, maybe you'll start to, you know, believe it. And of course, most don't. Um, or, or it just becomes about, oh, yeah, I think I'll buy that kind of, uh, fill up my car with that gas because they are beyond petroleum BP. <laughs> yeah. And as a photographer, uh, Jared, can I just ask you, as a photographer, um, having done that for a while, did it did it get to you, if that's not a personal question? It got question. to me. Uh, it got to me, yes. Uh, yeah. um, it really did get to me, and, and, and directing commercials got to me as well. Um, mm -hmm. at a certain point, I just couldn't do it anymore. And the money was really good. And, but I just felt, you know, I, I just, uh, when I stopped taking pictures for advertising, I could not lift a camera up for like two years. I, I literally couldn't take a picture. I was not interested in taking a picture for a, about two years, which was considering, you know, I started aggressively taking pictures in my, you know, probably in my when I was 10 or 9 or 8, mm. whatever. Uh, it was a very, very big deal at the, I guess, the end of my 20s not to do that. Sounds and traumatic, then I, actually. I just had to get rid of that mm. 
memory of the camera yeah. being something that I would earn a living with again and just get back to the purity of it. And it took a long time and will. And, and of course, it did come but back. But it has changed but you and it has, it has uh, influenced how you went forward with, with the camera. It certainly influenced my technique and my ability to understand the power mm -hmm. of, of an image and what yep. I am capable of technically in achieving in terms of mm. provoking something. But I try to turn uh, my, my, my skill set to a world of positivity. But that's, that's what I meant earlier. <laughs> the, the moment you are involved in producing things, you get, gain a much better understanding of how this part of the world works and uh, what tools they use and what tricks mm. they they use yes and and that will be like I'll, I'll mention that we, we should probably move along but but um, I'll, I'll talk about my pick a little later because it has a direct connection well let's let's just do that right now let's uh, switch over to the picks of the week because I'm pretty sure this topic is way too big to <laughs> To, we haven't answered the problem. To have solve we? it and answer it in surface. forty-five minutes, that's yeah. not going to work. <laughs> maybe, maybe listeners can chime in and give. Oh us yes, their absolutely. That, yeah, but I mean, I, good. Don't, the Discord. don't you think that the answer is really be conscious of the intention of those who are taking the pictures, yeah. making the pictures, and, producing mm. the pictures, and learn the tools yourself because this is the yeah. best way to protect yourself. So, so if, well, it's, it, that's part of the education process, mm. isn't it? If you yes. know how these things are produced, then you yeah. are far, far better equipped to spot them uh, and to understand. Yeah. Mm. Right. But yeah, Definitely. just keep asking questions. Don't take anything at face value. So, Certainly uh, not we, what we say. If anyone, well, yeah, exactly. Don't trust us. Um, if anyone <laughs> wants to chime in, um, the good place to do that is online at the Future of Photography. Uh, TFOP now is our official account. Um, or on YouTube as a comment. This is episode 195. Okay. And, uh, and Discord, Discord as Discord. well. Oh, Discord, Discord is always course. great for these longer form conversations. There's some good stuff going uh, through there at the moment. Thanks for bringing that up. I, I can take this for granted and then forget to talk about it. Um, <laughs> that's the best and most interactive place, of course, to discuss things. Um, so the picks. Uh, yeah, Jeremiah, why don't we just dive right into yours? Yeah, I, I, I chose this because I really encourage people to track <laughs> down this movie and see it. Uh, I don't know if that's the... Is that the one? No, I, I put on another one. It, it's, Let me see. Um, oh, that one. There, there it is, go. yeah. Um, Instagram we did talk about. But, yes. but th this is a very important mo uh, movie. It was directed, I say proudly, uh, by a friend of mine. Um, who f who was involved in the discovery of a, an enormous cache of, of films um, that came out of Auschwitz. And, and uh, Geron was a very, very famous actor um, in Germany, uh, uh, in the Weimar. Um, you know, he worked with Dietrich a lot, became a director. And, and he was a superstar uh, director who... Um, you know, his story, I won't go into detail about it, but he was a master uh, director. And um, what happened was, of course, uh, he was told at UFA that uh, at some point on his set, the, the Nazis came in or the SS came in and said, you can no longer work here. And uh, within a few years, he was forced to flee Germany. He fled to Paris, penniless. This, he was enormously wealthy. Um, and he thought he would start working um, in film, and he worked his way back up and started to work um, in, in film. Germans came in. Uh, he had to escape again. He escaped to uh, Holland, uh, where he started working in the Yiddish theater, and then, of course, <laughs> rebuilt himself once again. When the Germans came in, he was sent to uh, Theresienstadt. And as Theresienstadt was a, quote, model concentration camp that the Germans had used for propaganda purposes. In other words, they were building a camp where, at, you know, by force, the community had to present it themselves as like, this is not, it's a relocation camp and we're playing mm -hmm. music and there's a square and we're all happy. And the, the thought was, 
to make a film about it because the, the, the Germans were the best in the world at propaganda at that moment and um, sell the Red Cross who had come into Theresienstadt as, a, uh, as observers to make sure that nothing untoward were happening. And they, mm -hmm. they bought it and they came back and reported to their uh, local constituents that nothing untoward was happening. The Germans then thought, oh, let's make a film about it. And one moment they realized that they had Garon, this unbelievable director, in the camp. And they said, you're going to make the greatest propaganda movie ever. You have an unlimited budget. And he was like, what? And he went to the elders and said, I don't want to do that. And they said, no, you, you have to do this because your job is to survive these camps. And so began his work where he just demanded so much, he, big budget. And he shot and shot and shot and shot and shot. And finally, uh, by the time he was ready to kind of put it together, uh, the Allies had marched in. But by that time, he had been sent to Auschwitz where he died. Um, but it is an amazing story of the power of propaganda at, at its most dynamic uh, with and through a man's eyes who is a great director. And I, I cannot recommend this movie enough. It is uh, unique, powerful, and it has so much of the film that he shot as well as interviews with actors that were still alive um, that had worked with him at Ufa, etc., so uh, that's a, a great film about propaganda and something that you've never seen before, I promise. All right. Imar, what is yours? Mine is, we've talked about this already, um, Adam Curtis, Century of the Self. Um, there's a link in there to, it's, it's all the episodes squashed together into one video. But if you, if you just Google it you, or, or search it on YouTube, We're gonna link you can it. get the in individual episodes together or I separately. for one think it's unbelievable it's a fantastic movie it's mm -hmm. absolutely brilliant it just yeah. like um, the introduction of PR into the world yeah. just changed everything forever I don't think we'll ever recover no no <laughs> I own a copy of this movie Imar yeah I have a copy of this awesome Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That actually, good thing about Adam Curtis is that he releases all his documentaries on YouTube on his own channel for free, which I yeah, think is that's proper education. That's a proper, you know, he's a truth spreader, or whatever. He's yes. an excellent guy. Yeah. All right. Adrian, how about you? Uh, well, I've tried to stick to the, the, the photography theme here. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, this is uh, my, my link. This week is something I, I've probably mentioned in the past, but when we start talking about, you know, uh, the propaganda, and you start thinking, you know, about as I mentioned earlier, the the, the Soviet brutalism kind of imagery, mm. um, a lot of the a lot of the architecture in Soviet Russia uh, was controlled in its design, um, but one thing that wasn't uh, was bus stops. And so my link, uh, my my pick of the week this week is is back to the good old favorite. I, I, I love this stuff. Uh, Soviet bus stops. Uh, there's a short uh, Vimeo uh, video. The, yeah. There's more than one book now. Oh, I have wow. the I have the first book which I picked up uh, in an art gallery somewhere some years ago. Um, and uh, just uh, uh, the 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 reason for including this is it's it's the it's the the freedom of expression that sort of undermines the the propaganda and undermines yeah. uh, undermines the uh, brilliant the, the the state in this case it's creativity will carve that, out its niche yeah, right absolutely. yes life I'm life will find a it. way mm. or is that the wrong movie? i'm not quoting the right movie there am i but mm. that was something to do with frogs and dinosaurs but life will find a way <laughs> <laughs> okay and i have one um that i I'm pretty sure I've already brought up here in a previous episode. Whenever it it gets into towards the the propaganda thing, the how how to influence others, uh, I like to bring up a docu a, a mockumentary called uh, "Dark Side of the Moon." It's a French production. Original title is "Operation Lune," um, but it it is. Uh, 
It's a, a mockumentary that exposes how Stanley Clark, uh, how Stanley Kubrick faked the 1969 moon landing <laughs> with uh, help of <laughs> the CIA. And uh, the cast is Buzz yeah. Aldrin, his wife, Lois Aldrin, um, Christiane Kubrick, Henry Kissinger, mm. um, and Alexander Haig, <laughs> Donald Rumsfeld. They put <laughs> together a documentary that really mm. sells this so well and it's 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 cut together from different interviews and taken things taken out of context but in such a masterful <laughs> way that mm -hmm. that you up to about two-thirds into that documentary even the smartest people if they don't know that it's a mockumentary will start doubting <laughs> they will start doubting themselves okay. and then at one point they carry this into the absurd into the they they go okay. totally over the top so <laughs> if you want if you have someone around you who you want to help who you want to help g gather a bit of an immune system for these kind of things go rent <laughs> this one i haven't found it online <laughs> for free but go rent this one it's on different platforms and uh and just show this to them cold don't tell them anything <laughs> about this. To, to show, show it to them uh, with, the, with the notion of, hey, we really, you, this sure? is, you should see this. This is important. <laughs> and uh, about two thirds into it, they will most likely break down laughing. But until that point, <laughs> they will be so, I mean, I saw this cold. I didn't know it. It was on, <laughs> on German TV. Oh, wow. Okay. I saw this one night cold alone without anyone else. And I started doubting my smarts, and uh, it ended up being one of the most uh, intense kind of things around propaganda that I've ever experienced. So don't tell them, just show them. And, uh, Make sure they don't listen to our podcast, too. That, that would be helpful. Dark Side of the Moon. And uh, I guess that ends an episode that <laughs> is a bit of a different one. I'm... I'm uh It's a bit rambly. Yeah. My no, apologies. I, 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 no, I, I, it's, no, it's good. I like it. It's, it's all good. It's good. It is good. We didn't talk much about photography. You've just I'm just gonna sneak another link in here actually, because it's reminded me of a fantastic movie called Wag the Dog. Oh, oh yeah. that's oh, yes. excellent. Oh yes, that yeah, yeah, is uh, yeah. another one. Really good. Around this. Mm. So yeah, thank you very much for being uh here and uh we will be back pretty soon with another episode um again get in contact uh let us know your thoughts on this controversial topic until <laughs> next time everyone take care and bye bye bye, -bye. <laughs>